Hello, in this video I want to talk about the Spyderco Sage 3 in a Blue G10 and I don't want to do a usual uh, review because first of all uh, this is an already a bit older knife and there are a lot of uh, review videos and uh, articles about this knife on the internet and secondly uh, the knife is actually not available anymore. It's discontinued. Uh, this uh, Blue G10 version and the black carbon fiber you can find somewhere, but uh, it's really hard to come by a Blue G10 version. I know that for a fact, especially in Europe. Uh, actually, I only found one place where you can get this knife. It is, uh, I bought it from Militaria. Dot pl from Poland and actually for really a reasonable price for around 170 euros there are other places in Europe where the, this knife is still listed but uh, not really available when you try to buy it you cannot get it so yeah, I was lucky to still get this knife and I really wanted to have this knife and I will present you three reasons why I like the Spyderco Sage 3. The first reason why I like this knife is uh, because it's a Sage. Well that's obvious but uh, what does that mean? As you may know there are now five uh, knives in the Sage series starting with the Sage 1 and each knife uh, pays tribute to a specific knife locking mechanism and its inventor. Here in the case of the Sage 1 it's the Michael Walker liner lock. It's one of my favorite EDC knives. Then you have the Sage 2 with the Chris Reef integral lock, uh, the Sage 3 here with the bolt action lock, the 4 with the um, back lock and the newest one is the Sage 5 with uh, Spyderco's compression lock. So as a knife guy I found that quite interesting and nice that Spyderco pays tribute to all these great inventions. But not only that, I really appreciate and really love the, the concept of the Sages. They all have basically the same blade. That's a, leaf shape style so it's a, a good slicer made out of S30V some people complain about S30V they don't like it but uh, I still think it's one of the maybe not the best but very good blade steels especially when it's made by Spyderco I understand that some people have problems I myself uh, I'm not so stoked about Kershaw's implementation of S30V, but all my spider cores are really great. So this is uh, one thing. And the other thing is I also like the handles because you can choose between holding a normal grip or you can choke up on the finger choil. Whereas for example on the Oops, native 5, which is similar, and I kind of prefer the native for carrying, but I like the Sage more for actual use because the native is a bit short for my hand because the pinky doesn't really fit on the handle, so I am forced to use the finger choil most of the times. Whereas on the Sage, I have the option comfortable grip either way. Also it has a wire clip and the same applies to the Sage 3. Again good grip in normal position, good grip in a choked up position with jimping on the back, leaf shape blade, a wire clip. But if you look closely you can see it's a bit different and it becomes more evident when you close the knives. 
don't know if you can see it. Well, the Sage 3 is quite a bit wider in this dimension than the Sage 1. So I don't want to state all the stats about the knife. You can I put that in the description below. But I want to share one dimension which is usually not mentioned. So in the widest dimension when closed, the Sage 1 is just about four centimeters or a little bit over one and a half inches. The Sage 3 on the other side, its widest dimension has over 4.5 centimeters and around one and three quarters of an inch. So it's quite a bit wider. So even when you compare it to something like the full-size Griptilian, also with the hole, it has these are the same dimension in in width. So the oops, sorry about that. The Sage 3 is, is very wide in pocket, and this is one of the downsides. And the reason for that, I think, is the locking mechanism here. It's accommodated on the right side, on the left side has the blade, which is leaf shape and with a hole, so it has to be quite wide. And when you add it all up, it has to be quite wide. And you can see also here, that compared to the Sage 1, the pivot is not centered, it's a bit tilted to the left. Whereas in the Sage 1, it's almost perfectly in the center. But overall, it's still a Sage with all the great attributes that it has. Very utilitarian, high quality product, great use, good edge, and everything else. So, to sum it up, it's even though it's not exactly the same as the Sage one, but it's still a Sage. So reason number two why I like the Sage 3 is, as you can see here, I said it before, it comes with a bolt action lock. Works like this. So now it's locked. When you want to unlock it, you have to press this button and push it back and close it. And this is very similar to Benchmade's access lock. So here I have the mini Griptilians and the full size Griptilian all very similar. Again. And also Spyderco's ball bearing lock. So technically speaking there are slight differences between these locking mechanism internally but from a user perspective or when you actually use the knife and the user interface is uh, very similar almost identical and I like that I really like this type of locking mechanism so this is reason number two why I like this knife and here's reason number three why I like this Spyderco Sage 3 you can see it here, these are all my blue spider coats. And yeah, you can guess it, I like the color blue. And the Sage 3 is, comes also in blue, and I like it a lot. It's not just that it's um, a great color, but it's also, for, especially for EDC use and um, in environments. Where tactical knives are not so uh, popular or not not, not well accepted so, so blue, blue knife if you have to use it you cannot hide it anymore so so um, a subdued color won't help you but a nice bright blue doesn't look that offensive compared to let's say a black knife and it's a minor thing, but still nice. So these are the reasons 
why I like the Spyderco CH3. Thanks for watching.